Hi students, welcome back. Today's topic is sound. Earth is a planet of sound. Sound starts with just a simple vibration. It's at the heart of everything from a latest song to the conversation you have with your friends. But how does sound work? What turns the motion of molecules into symphonic sounds of orchestras, whistling tea kettles and barking dogs? Let's explore the phenomenon world of sound and vibration and how this natural phenomenon is used for communication and even navigation. Sound is a invisible form of energy. Sounds are made by vibrations. Some sounds are easy to see. For example, if you stretch out and twang a rubber band, you can see it moving back and forth. Other vibrations are less obvious, but you can feel them by putting your hand around your throat and humming a tune. Can you feel the vibrations? Those are your vocal cord moving rapidly back and forth. Without vibration, the world would be silent. So if you shout in a vacuum place, you cannot hear the sound. How do vibrations travel and get to your ears? The vibration that creates sound must travel through a medium such as air, water or anything made up of molecules. To understand sound, it's important to remember that air isn't just empty. Air is actually a fluid as you can see in this figure. Air contains a large number of small molecules. Although you can't see air, you can feel it flow past you and you can use it to blow bubbles or to fill up a balloon. Air can move, flow and fill up spaces. The molecules in air are loosely packed, floating and bumping around. It is these air molecules that transmit most sounds. Suppose you want to transmit a gift and you are here. And so what you can do? You can pass the gift to another friend and she can pass to another one. And this is how the gift comes to the last friend. So this is how the sound travels. As you can see here, the sound always travels in waves. Suppose if you hit a spoon against a drinking glass, it will cause the glass to vibrate and as the glass shudders and shakes with vibration, it push the surrounding medium air molecules into forward motion. With each forward motion, the air molecules pulse outward, pushing other air molecules and crowding them together. With each backward motion, the molecules get less crowded. At some places, they get crowded and at some places, they're less crowded. So this traveling vibration is called sound wave. The areas where the air molecules are pushed together are called compressions. The areas where the air molecules are more spread out are known as rarefractions. The distance from one high point to another high point is known as wavelength as you can see here. One high point to another. So this is how sound travels through air molecules making compressions, rarefractions. So what is sound? Sound is a form of energy that can be heard and travel in waves. When matter vibrates or moves back very quickly, a sound is made. Sound waves can travel through solid liquid and gases but cannot travel through vacuum. When a school bell rings, part of the bell will vibrate creating sound. So what is range of audibility? Range of audibility for human ears is 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. The frequency range below 20 hertz is known as infrasound and which the elephants can hear. The frequency above 20,000 hertz is known as ultrasound which the bats can hear. This moving picture shows the eardrum at this end. The purple one is eardrum. What happens? It, the air molecules vibrate like rarefraction, compression and hit the eardrum and this is how then through various bones and various processes it is reached to our brain. So this is how sound travels in our ear and we can hear only in this range. Frequency of sound should be 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz for human ears to hear it. So as I have told you, sound always travels in waves. What are the properties of wave? First, amplitude. The maximum displacement of a particle of a medium on either side of its mean position. This is amplitude in time period, the time taken by the particle of a medium to complete its one vibration. Then frequency, the number of vibrations made by the particle of a medium in one second. This frequency is measured in hertz, which we have studied earlier. 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz was a frequency of sound wave, which the a human ear can hear. Then what is wavelength? The distance traveled by a wave in one time period of vibration is of a particle of a medium. The wavelength can also be defined as the distance between two identical points on consecutive waves. This point is known as peak as you can 
see here the highest point is peak or crest and lowest point is rough so distance between two consecutive peak or crest is also known as wavelength then what is wave velocity the distance traveled by the wave in one second there is a relationship between wave velocity wavelength and frequency that is speed is equal to wavelength into frequency speed v is equal to f frequency f lambda wavelength is symbol is lambda now mechanical waves as i have already told you sound always requires a medium to travel the medium can be air or liquid or gas so it's known as mechanical waves sound waves travel through solids liquid gases then there are two types of waves one is longitudinal wave and another one is transverse wave this picture shows transverse wave transverse waves vibrate at right angles to the direction of the wave suppose the wave direction is in this direction vibration is made 90 degree that is known as transverse wave light and radio waves are transverse wave what is longitudinal wave as you can see in this picture longitudinal waves vibrate parallel to the direction of travel of the wave sound waves are longitudinal one hits the another another one hits the another so vibration and wave direction are parallel to each other how sound waves differ from electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves do not need a medium or substance to travel all electromagnetic waves are transverse wave mechanical waves waves that need a medium to travel it can be transverse or longitudinal now reflection of sound sound waves just like any other wave when strikes a hard surface or a boundary of another medium returns back in the same medium the returning back of the sound wave on striking a surface such as wall metal sheet plywood is etc is called reflection of sound wave the only requirement for reflection of sound wave is that the size of the reflecting surface must be bigger than the wavelength of the sound wave then reflection of sound obeys certain laws what are those the incident ray and the reflected ray makes an angle with this normal so the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection then incident ray this normal or perpendicular drawn on the cardboard and the reflected ray all should be in the same plane this is same as the laws for reflection of light what is echo echo are produced by reflection of sound from such surfaces the sound heard after reflection from a distant obstacle such as cliff hillside wall of a building edge of a forest after the original sound has ceased is called an echo if a person stands at some distance from a wall and produces a sharp sound he hears two distinct sound one is the original sound almost heard instantaneously and another one is the sound heard after reflection from the wall which is known as echo and what happens to the distance it is always twice the distance between the obstacle and the sound producer so the distance will be always 2d right 1d and then another d so condition for formation of an echo an echo is heard if the distance between the person producing sound and the rigid obstacle is long enough to allow reflected sound to reach the person at least 0.1 second after the original sound and the distance what should be the distance to hear an echo let's calculate we know human ear has persistence of sound for 0.1 second so time is 0.1 second speed of sound is 3 32 meter per second distance is always 2x so let's find out the speed here we can find out the speed as 16.6 meter so minimum distance required to hear an echo is 16.6 meter sometimes echo of same sound is heard more than once such multiple echoes are known as reverberation the condition for hearing echo distinctly first the distance should be greater than 16.6 or greater than 17 meters then the size of reflector must be large as compared to the wavelength of the sound wave then the intensity of the sound also should be high if you make a whisper and you wait to hear an echo it won't be possible so how can you determine the speed of sound by a method of echo speed is distance by time if you know the distance you hear the distance is 50 meters so what will be the total distance for echo into 2 so 15 into 2 100 time is 33 seconds so you can calculate the speed of sound so use of echoes by bats dolphins and fishermen let's see how they use echo. echoes find the application in sound ranging and echo depth sounding by using ultrasonic waves but how animals use echo let's see dolphins detect the enemy and obstacles by emitting ultrasonic waves that is of frequency more than 20000 hertz and hearing the echo they use ultrasonic waves for hunting their prey the bats fly with speed much lower than the speed of sound the sound produced by the flying bats 
get reflected back from the obstacle in front of it. By hearing the echo, the bats come to know even in the dark the location of the obstacles. So they can fly safely without colliding with them. The process of detecting obstacles is known as sound ranging. Similarly, a fisherman sends a voice or a sound and then receives a sound after some seconds. Then what he does, he calculates the time. He knows the time and he knows the speed of sound in water. So he can calculate the distance of the fish and so he can spread the net and catch the fish. Use of echoes by sonar. Sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging. In sonar, ultrasonic waves are sent in all directions from the ship. These waves are received after reflection from an obstacle. The distance of obstacle from the ship can be calculated by measuring the time interval t between the instant when the waves are sent and the instant when waves are received after reflection from the obstacle. The distance d from the obstacle from the source is then calculated by d is equal to distance is equal to speed into time by 2 where v is the speed of ultrasonic waves. This process is called echo depth sounding. In radar also that is radio detection and ranging same principle is used. Both sonar and radar, the transmitter and receiver are placed close to each other. Now medical use of echo. In medical science, echo method of ultrasonic waves is used for imaging human organs such as liver, gallbladder, uterus and womb. This is called ultrasonography. Similarly, echocardiography is used to obtain the image of human heart. So this is how echo is used and produced. So thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you have understood the concept, please like my video and subscribe to my channel for more updates.